My name's John Goldberg. Some of you know me, some of you don't. But I'm a drug developer and a, uh, and a sarcoma doctor. What is a sarcoma? Sarcoma is cancer of the connective tissue. Well, what does that mean? Uh, I'm still not completely sure. With some of our sarcomas, the or tissue of origin is mysterious. But connective tissue is tissue that connects one part of the body to the other. So thinking of it simply, your bones, your muscles, cartilage, uh, uh, and then it gets further afield where you, you have uh, uh, smooth muscle, uh, things like that. Uh, but all these tissues can give rise to cancers, and that they form the family of sarcomas. Uh, they're very rare. Uh, each individual sarcoma, because there's probably more than 50 kind, kinds of sarcoma, depending who you talk to, each individual one becomes an almost unique problem for the provider who's taking care of the patient. You're not going to see 100 patients with XYZ OMA a year, or maybe even in your career. And we were just talking about this before, uh, some of us, about how you might only get one or two patients, and yet we know that with science, we can advance things for each one of those patients, and I'll get into some examples. Uh, it accounts for a larger proportion of childhood cancer than it does for adult cancer. And uh, that's one of the reasons why pediatricians have, have had a little bit of an advantage, because it's such a large part of our practice that we've come up with some ideas for, uh, for doing clinical trials, but by no means do we have a, a monopoly on that. So I've alluded to it a bit, but why, why should we care? If these are so rare and we're not really going to see that many of them, why, why is it important for us here at a cancer center, the only university cancer center in South Florida, to be involved with this? And uh, I'd like to cite a few examples. One is gastrointestinal stromal tumor, which is, a, or GIST tumor, the most com I believe now it's technically the most common sarcoma. Uh, is that, you say that's true, Pat? I mean, supposedly 5,000 cases a year. Yeah, but you know, 10, 20 years ago, this wasn't even really codified as a diagnosis. We didn't, there were things that are probably are just now that we didn't realize were just then. And it was an intersection of understanding how Gleevec, a new drug, well now it's not so new, targets the C-kit pathway and how C-kit was aberrant in GIST tumors. It was that understanding that knitted together uh, the biology and made this both understood as a relatively common sarcoma and allowed it to be treated. Uh, I wouldn't say that, that Gleevec has eliminated GIST or Gleevec and its successors, but it's enabled this to be a chronic disease where patients can get a medication uh, and they can be stable for a, quite some time. It's a, a, a sarcoma that you get in, in the belly, uh, gastrointestinal stromal tumor. And what we're really going for here is, is at very least finding a Gleevec for each one of these unique, unusual cancers that comprise sarcoma. And the only way you can do that is through clinical trials. And uh, we, we have some clinical trials here. I'm going to describe briefly kind of the, the umbrella of, of those clinical trials. And, uh, and, and, uh, the other thing that's important about this in South Florida that we deal with all the time, and you know, uh, you may hear more about this later, is the idea of an unplanned excision or a, a patient seeing a physician who doesn't realize that they need to send this patient to an expert or to someone who knows an expert who's going to think about uh, taking care of this tumor uh, in a more thoughtful manner. Uh, that includes who's going to do the initial biopsy, do they understand the possible tumor that this could be, do they know that it's a sarcoma, will they do a biopsy that will later allow the final surgeon to do a complete resection to remove this tumor. Uh, this is critical in, in some patients, it uh, can lead to misdiagnosis if you don't do the right biopsy, it can lead to the need for an amputation later. Uh, even even can lead to the need for radiation treatment or, or even worse in patients if they don't have the right surgery done in the beginning. So that's that's kind of why we're here. Why we want we certainly want to make sure that our UM Sylvester community knows about what a sarcoma is and why it's important to interact with our team and what we have here to offer. So let me give you an example of a case like this. Um, 
This is a patient that Dr. Conway and I <coughs> share. Uh, a young lady was figure skating and felt a snap in her leg. I don't know where she found frozen ice to skate on in Florida, but <laughs> she did. Uh, and it turned out she had this big thing, I, I think even for the non-radiologist like me, you can tell that there's something growing in the middle of this bone, and that's not normal, it's not supposed to be there. Um, and she ended up having Ewing sarcoma, which is the second most common bone cancer that uh, young people get, uh, between 200 and 300 cases a year in people under the age of 21. This is a cancer that even though it's a childhood cancer, you can get when you're 30, you can even get it when you're 40, I and mean, certainly it's not confined to childhood. And Dr. Benedetto and I both talk about this, this tumor uh, at times together. Uh, but these are people with a lot of living to do, even if it's a 40-year-old, as I'm getting closer to that age, that's pretty young, and there's a lot more life left. This, this young lady hopefully has another 80, uh, 60 years left. So, so it, it's really out of proportion to the incidence, the importance of this, this type of cancer.